The Terrible Trolls ripoff. There it is. Look at it. Look at this absolute abomination. This glorious piece of art was suggested to us on Discord by Cursed Cursed People. Thank you to Blue Bomb 716 JonahCraft7, Vincent was here 732 deleted user apparently, and the Blue Artist. A lot of blues and sevens. I hope this is what you wanted. And even more good news on the revelation that this exists, the production team behind 2016's greatest movie is none other than Asylum. The same creators of Sharknado, and Titanic 2, and Bone Alone. I am genuinely ecstatic to learn they've done animated movies too. So, let's dig into this runtime of regrets. Trolls have carried on in this secret competition of which to this day, we like to think we're winning. D did any of you catch any of that? Competition of which to this day? Competition of which to this day. Well anyway, trolls exist. They pranked man. Man then journeyed on and forgot trolls existed, despite apparently having specific interactions with them and pranking them back. Sure. And here we are. There it is. As this dragonfly leads us to the grounds at Dick Van Dyke? We're set at a summer camp where these two kids are forced to action away from their unanimated Game Boys in 2016. And this camp counselor vibrates as she leans forwards to grab them. We are literally animated from like a glitchy game engine. <laughs> Aww. 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 And the dialogue is just killing it so far. My god, it's been 10 seconds and we have such a feast. And then immediately we come to this guy, another camp counselor of some kind, as he's clearly trying to capture a troll. Irresistible. Ah uh, yes, what impeccable animation you have there for clearing your hands. I see no issues here. And so antics ensue. Olaf here plots down his bait bag in his golf cart only to see his trap snared. It's a squirrel. A demonic squirrel. And then another goes. Ugly little bugaboos. Wait a minute. I thought this buggy was out in the middle of the field. What is this thing doing out here now? Oh, it's gotta be one of those 75 minutes. Trap 2 does involve trolls, as this time... Oh, they know we're watching and could just teleport around too? What the fuck? And the trolls rip up the guy's trousers, just in time for the kids to spot and embarrass him. Without the lady that was escorting them earlier. To which Olaf scoots away, even though his model doesn't have the rip anymore, and... <laughs> there are no acceleration physics on his cart, and the kids run away from hearing the other trolls laugh. Ah, boy, you're really living up to your name. <laughs> what was her name? I mean, that was just the opener. That was supposed to be their best foot put forward. My god. Now in case you were thinking this isn't really a Trolls movie ripoff, this is just a terrible movie about trolls, a true coincidence of an overlapping subject, I direct your attention to the release date of Trollland. It was October 25th, 2016. And as for the original Trolls movie, that was October 21st, 2016. It's the same week window. So it's not a matter of watching the Trolls movie and opting to make another one, this movie was intended to directly dupe audiences into watching the wrong Trolls movie upon coming to the cinemas. And that is the specific modus operandi of most Asylum movie releases. Bringing in recent highlights like Homeward, an orctastic journey of elvish proportions, as well as Top Gunner, Guardians of the Sky, and American Psychos, Clown which, ironically enough, has a poster design that surprisingly goes incredibly hard. Is this a rip-off of another design somewhere? Because, like, I mean, that's a fantastic design, to be honest. Anyway, I'm getting a bit distracted. Oops, time to go. Ah, Finn. And so we now meet the cursed-looking troll on the box art, Fen, who clearly isn't too invested in the idea of the family business of trolling. Oh my god, I just realized they're trolls who do trolling. I forgot the term, it's been so long. The plot is kind of mumbled back and forth for a while. Fen has a Spider-Man moment. <laughs> and then this random stranger's head clips through her clothes on the way out. Glorious. And so here's what everything's about. A pranking competition with some immaculate carving font on that board. Hm. It's almost like it's just basic typing from a computer. And the crowd is just 
unapologetically duplicates of two generic models. This movie is built for function, not immersion. And look, the exposure settings over everyone updates mid-shot here. Immersion is barely an afterthought, as our cliché troll elder comes to make a speech. The competition was intense. A lot of new faces out there. Oh, there he is. This is what they shoved him into. This is Dick Van Dyke. How could you do this to such a national treasure? Or maybe he's in his element. Apparently he likes being hidden into green gremlin things. Anyway, there's two days left and Sister here is way in the lead. Though she doesn't have the ability to close her eyes when she's taking a nap, apparently. I'm always on the lookout. Had their heads on swivel, but they did. That's all you need to grab from this four minute monologue, so let's move on. How have I never noticed up to this point? Jarvik here has two sets of eyebrows on her, and they both emote separately at different times. I can barely even pass the logic behind these movements. It's one thing to have an under budgeted engine to animate with, but I'm not sure I even understand what they are trying to convey with their animation. Anyway, Fen goes out to the forest wanting to make friends with the humans rather than pranking them. Huh. Hmm. Oh, hold on a moment. Are the clouds actively spinning? I get what they were going for, but this is 100% not how that works, and it is so fast. Do the animators not even know how the sky works? Ow, ow, ow. Oof, that looked like that really hurt, judging by how the entire foot went through the steel trap there. Really convincing all around. It worked. Olaf. Whoa. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> what? I thought Fen was in a log somewhere and just kicked it. Now he was trapped and Olaf just appears? Oh, oh sorry. Olaf! It then only gets weirder as Fen animates with only half of his body. Olaf starts seeing heavenly lights and then steps on another one of his traps. To which Olaf whips out some eggs that explode upon impact. Where was this the whole time, Olaf? What kind of video game character attack have you been hiding this whole time? Also, Fen is now invisible for a moment, despite having normal smoke to hide from or something. I mean, I gotta admit, for an action scene, it certainly kept me hooked, just for all the wrong reasons. And it just never stops this spectacle. Hey, isn't learning to animate a ball like literally the first lesson everyone has in animation? How is even this screwed up? <laughs> so Fen goes and sits up a tree as we linger on Olaf some more, meekly returning home. He exposites about what just happened as well as his 30 year backstory, but we'll skip most of that. With movies like this, there is not a brain cell behind any given scene. It's all functional and shallow. So don't expect to pick up any themes or depths from this one time. Got it all on the surface right here. Speaking of surface, this kid is next. Mom's gonna freak when she sees there were giant turners here and she missed it. And he is not on the surface. This kid is on a log that's just floating midair. Did they notice? Is it meant to be a trick of the eye? It's not working. That kid can levitate. But magic's not enough to stop him being bullied by Mohawk Kid with his hands in his crotch and bold baby over there. Freedom. Freedom the friendless. <laughs> I don't know where these movies grab their stock laughing sound effects because even the cliche bully characters just sound so detached from reality. It's almost an accomplishment that they're so off the mark. <laughs> <laughs> so after 60 seconds of a non-argument, they then throw around his notebook, of course, for more non-arguments before the counselor comes in and breaks them up. What have I told you about picking on the new kids? Honestly, I don't know what to do with ya. Everyone just sounds like that, huh? As Fen invisibly tackles remnants of that notebook. And also, that first kid's two other twins were there to witness. This movie is a train wreck. And as our bullied protagonist looks up to the sky and tries not to vomit at the sheer velocity of the planet he's on, he's caught by another nature trap. Though not before showing off his telekinetic skills with a notepad that goes anywhere except on his damn hand. And so the kid is stuck there for a while until you'll never guess what happens. Fen comes in to save him. Ow! Yeah, that sounds about right. Why was there a slapping sound effect in there? What did that goblin even smack? Okay, but if you don't want to eat me, why did you trap me? I didn't trap you. That's a human trap. I don't even know what to say about this. Typically, you kind of get used to the aesthetic of a movie, no matter how terrible it is. 
But the moment this kid here starts pulling out the Ahegao face while trying to have a normal doll conversation, you know you're never gonna get used to this animation that's this poor. I mean, there was clearly never any hope of some actual lip syncing, but... Well, you're the one in the troll <laughs> trap, you tell me. <sighs> I mean, I don't really know what I was expecting. Man, I really need to lower my standards for animated movies, I guess. I mean, who needs to read animated lips anyway? <laughs> so what happens next in this incredibly simple plot? Well, the two get discussing on the core conflict straight away. Does Olaf try to trap you because you prank him, or do trolls prank him because he tries to trap you? All right, yeah, we get it. Literally the first possible moment we could strike right at the core, and we're there. And then there's Olaf again, doing... something. I see. That way! And it's like, the two are kind of running away from him, but not really. The kid's just hopping on some logs or something. And now that they're three steps from where they started, they get rambling again. I took a big risk. Why? You didn't have your eyes glued to one of those machines like everyone else. Oh, it's one of these again. No nuance, no depth, just dogpiling on kids using phones in a kid's movie. Nice. You were like me, you see nature. Yeah, looks pretty good to me. I tell you, the screeching howls of the dam really helped to bring together this whole peaceful set piece, you know? God diggity damn, this place is magnificent. <laughs> so, as the troll family continue to cause minor inconveniences, they then reveal their big end game plan to wipe the competition. By doing what I just did to the whole camp and they don't linger on it any further. We are just skimming right through all the beats. Here's Olaf again, hunting and getting beaten for it. Ow! Ow! Ouch! Riveting. So we're finally back to the full camp as everyone heads to bed, just for this Hayden kid to come out again to fend, so we're right back on this practically identical scene. Just, it's night time now. While Olaf is still hunting about. Aye! Aye! Don't you have a counselor job to do, Olaf? Like, are you not an authority figure here, with some duties connected to the camp beyond finding mythical creatures? No, clearly not. So Hayden and Fen wander through a forest in the void, if the background is to be believed, as Fen reveals his food hall, and they discuss food. Is this enticing to anyone yet? What's a hot dog? You know what? I actually don't know. Well, we made it. This is about as close to a real good joke we get. Probably grubs. <laughs> and then you lost me. But with the next beat, Fen hints where his underground room is, to which Hayden remembers drawing it, and vice versa, they discuss home. I live far away, in the city. What's a city? Well, you know what, maybe we should just skip this scene. The animation is obviously the highlight of our enjoyment of this film, and I can barely see any in this dark room. The dialogue is not going to keep my attention well enough if we're describing the human experience in exposition this entire time. So, it's the next morning. Hayden is panicked he'll be punished for being out all night, and Fen doesn't care. Is that a problem? Until suddenly, he does have consequences. My sister would be super mad at me. I was out all night with a human. Oh, okay. And naturally, they bump into Counselor Olaf again. I mean, there's only like three groups to keep up with, so it almost feels like this is all one big long scene since we see so much of everyone constantly. And as authoritative Counselor Man, is Olaf going to reprimand the kid for inexplicably being out all night in the woods? Or is he just gonna assume the kid's been interacting with trolls? This man cannot get out of his obsession. Can he vote? Green darners, blue- I think you've seen a little more than that. You could tell me you saw something, didn't you? Like, with how rare it is for Olaf to spot one when he's actively looking, how can he think this kid saw one on the fly? If that's the logic, why not recruit him if it sounds so easy? Standing in the forest. Standing in a golden... Okay, this is getting a little weird and creepy. Someone please check this guy's hard drives. Kick off! Yeah, yeah here we go. let's go! Come on. <laughs> and apparently, someone put a bomb in the football. Uh, you made it halfway. Congratulations. What is wrong with you? Well, while you're here, do consider subscribing. If you like or hate what you see. Terrible episodes release every two weeks on our current schedule, and I'm open to all suggestions over on our Discord server. Or check the link tree in the description to see all my other links. That's the whole B for that scene. It is like two lines long, because the other counselor is commenting on how the camp is falling apart from the broken football. The movie at this point, 
it doesn't really know what to do with itself. So there's just these micro scenes instead. Always a good sign of competent filmmaking. Here's another one with the Troll Elder, commenting on an amateur prank of switching butter and mayonnaise and how he did it 22 seasons ago. Okay, and then we're back to the damn boy again. This is great. We've got a free morning. I just have to be back by lunchtime. Wait, what? Olaf just let him go earlier? But the kid said he was lost and trying to get back. Now he's free to stay out? I mean, I didn't really want another scene with a collection of paralysis demons over there, but at least sprinkle in some logic somewhere. But now Fen wants to take Hayden to his home. I thought about it, and I think it's the right thing to do. When? During the time that Hayden had one conversation and then came back? Like, you couldn't have spent at least a little bit more time mulling over it a little bit more. Oh, I've just stood on him. I had no idea where he was in the scene. He keeps changing around everywhere. Apparently it was under my foot. Gross. So next is the deer scene. Now there's a deer! Modeled in practically a different art style to everyone else we've seen so far. But that's not the end of the visual mess. See, Fen is now wanting to feed it and teach Hayden how to do the same. With some berries. Bit of a pointless scene. A moment of being one with nature, sure. Except, as the deer is nibbling on Fen's food, Fen is sliding along the ground with Hayden like they are part of the same plane together. And then, as Hayden is feeding with his twitchy shoulder... Ow! Hey. Oops! Ah. The deer runs away and moves the tree with it for a brief moment in time. Every asset in this movie is just cursed somehow. They ain't here. <laughs> and apparently so are the sound effects. And so begins a montage. Fen and Hayden are enjoying nature everywhere, whilst Olaf and the bullies are being beaten down by nature and traps the whole time. The boys come to this giant tree with a saw blade stuck in it that's apparently an enigma. No one knows how it happened. Not even old Yusuf. Yusuf says no one has gotten it right yet. Uh, but I thought no one knows how it happened, no? Regardless, the troll land is close by. Except we need delays. We're only halfway through. Reaching there by lunchtime is bad, because that's Hayden's established curfew to get back. So everything undoes. Come on, it's Sloppy Joe's for lunch today. Yes, I'll show you the Warren then. I'll see you later this afternoon. But it's an opportunity to finally get back to the family of trolls and their big bad plan. They intend to attack the totem pole, I don't remember that being a thing established at any earlier point in the movie, to fall over, hitting the water tower, that again was only established in a single shot during another one of those micro scenes, to then flush away the camp while everyone is away at the jamboree at the lake that evening. Flex. And all of it is told at this weird angle, like, what are they looking at? Why are we here? What is that glowing thing in the corner? And is that Fen over there now? Hey, hey! Trying to sneak by us, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> what is going on? I am so confused on the abilities of these trolls, man. The delivery and the execution are truly throwing me through a loop. So now, of course, comes the Trolls Confrontation Underground, where Fen first diverts the idea that he's been with a human. Olaf almost caught me. I wasn't paying attention and he grabbed me. Only to then turn around and admit he was with humans. But I met a human I can trust. He's the one that freed me from Olaf's trap. Huh? When did that happen? I thought it was the other way around, unless you're talking about this moment where he's not caught, he's just holding on while up hot. It's hardly Hero's mightiest moment. You won't have to worry about punishing me because I'm leaving for good. And now how's that supposed to help the situation? If Fen's whole game is stopping the cycle of mildest cartoon violence, then leaving the institution and allowing the others to continue is completely counterintuitive to that. Why do I always get wrapped into the logic of these terrible movies? <laughs> oh God. Don't worry, Yusup. I'll bring him back. He he's still here, you realize. We don't have it in the animation budget to do a proper action scene. Running away can only ever really look like this. I don't have to tell you. Fen, come back here! But he's escaped, and back at the camp, this counselor learns that the boats have been sabotaged, so moves this evening's events to the picnic area, on the collision course of the water tower later. Jarvik is hunting for Fen by sitting static on a tree, throwing acorns of course, and the main boys meet up and make a plan. Ha, huh, it's funny. The only person who believed me is Olaf. And somehow the VA's voice is getting more and more echoey as the film continues. Speaking of VAs, I'm pretty sure Fen over here recorded all of his lines strictly separately from everyone else. Maybe even first. Since even when spoken to about Olaf, everyone clearly pronounces it more akin to Frozen, and only he addresses the term as Olaf. 
No one was around to correct him, and the director certainly wasn't about, apparently. But Olaf looks to be their next plan, getting him on board to chase away the gang. I wouldn't have predicted the kid recruiting him, but I'll take it. He could be our secret weapon. Cut to a scene with noticeably funky exposition settings as the gang waste their time stuck on some flypaper. Ah, uh, boy, you're really living up to your name, huh? He, he already said that. How has this guy run out of dialogue lines already? Did he have like four? He's like that awkward guy in the group who only speaks when someone brings up his pre-prepared conversation starters or something. He's me when I'm feeling particularly awkward. What's the point of going invisible now, when everyone can clearly see the floating box? Ugh. Here's Olaf again, now able to easily spot a troll. Who'd have thought it was suddenly that easy? It doesn't go anywhere. Actually, everything doesn't really go anywhere for a while. We all know the next real beat is the big water tower plan. But what the Gobble Gang are actually up to is getting the tools for their evil deed and searching for Fen. It's all just wasted time of padding, like this entire movie. Here they are, meeting again, and then splitting up again, setting up like four or five other scenes they all have to go and investigate. These two smelling Fen and Hayden somehow, Olaf dwaddling towards them, Jarvik almost catching the main boys of the tree, but then not just getting his bag. <laughs> Humans! Uh, hold on, do the trolls each come with their own mini rucksack? That's honestly adorable. Who tailors these? Olaf then successfully grabs those two other trolls. No traps needed, just a bag and some dummies for targets. After all this time, two trolls in one day? Olaf, you are good. Oh, you can really sense the relief and victory in his voice. Also, how very typical that Olaf manages to be Fen's secret weapon without them even having to approach him to recruit him on the task. Funny how things turn out like that, huh? You've also then got the bullies playing dominoes, Olaf caging the troll bag in more dreadful animation, and the other trolls digging through the backpacks. He brought candy beetles for the human? Ah! They then spot Hayden's notebook on the troll reveal, of course. Right as Hayden apparently is being chased by those bullies and also is now right on top of them. Ben, are you here? I think we lost him. Ben, uh, stop. Ah yes, and he's fallen to the ground so far, he's starting to float in midair again. This kid's got multiple talents, man. It's not just art. But you know what talent he hasn't got? Intelligence! Like everyone else in this damn movie! Jarvik now appears in front of Hayden, telling him that this trap was actually all Fen's idea, and he's been pranked this entire time by him. All the while, Hayden continues to fly above a wallpaper of the forest floor, as is the notebook. And apparently Jarvik as well. What happened here? Jarvik starts ripping up the notebook, and Hayden, in his big brain ways, comes out with... I thought you were my friend, but you're nothing but a liar! Genius kid. And though Jarvik tries to do the opposite to Fed as well, claiming the kid was leading into Olaf, he rejects. Ironic that the smartest character, if we can even call it that, is the one with the stupidest face. No, you listen to me. Hayden's one of the kindest beings I know. And so, off he goes. Notebook pages in hand as Jarvik just kind of... rotates back there. Oh god, it's an Olaf jump scare. Swiping two more and taking the map as well, apparently. All the while, Hayden is moping away with a voice that is suddenly way more mature and older, arguing with an invisible Fen. How do I know you're not lying right now? Because I didn't lie to you about the dragonflies. Aw, how sweet. Hey, wait, they specifically couldn't make other objects disappear? That's a continuity error! <laughs> So as Fen is left in the dust as a reject, the action music kicks in, of course. Drama is a-brewing. Right, Fen now perfect in the firing range in his invisible form as Olaf is trying to make his way to the cabin with empty cages that somehow include the baggies of trolls. But he eventually makes it, and Jarvik only just notices everyone else is missing. Well, I guess I can only count on myself. Uh... I think your tree's hung itself again. Oof. And now the frame rate's going funky too. We're in the final 20 minute stretch and looking at the next room we see, everything is really falling apart. Which is impressive to say considering everything else we have witnessed up till now. So Olaf seemingly is talking to himself with these invisible trolls in a bag, though there is a semblance of someone else being here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's how it is. Hey, does Olaf have a picture of the queen in his room? Okay. So Fen distracts Olaf out of the cabin as Hayden of his own volition chooses to go inside and help the trolls. 
two are now visible. You got pranked and you're still willing to help us? You know, this is meant to be the emotional highlight of the film as these indoctrinated trolls realize that humans have some of the same positive values as they do, and maybe there doesn't need to be such a divide. You know, there are messaging lines like, Family and friends are the only real thing anybody has. You always take care of your family. You see what they're going for in their most generic of cliche, family-friendly, good morals, no death kind of ways. But at the same time, it's met with a response that is this, that has no irony in it. I don't think a troll's ever said that to a human before. I'm supposed to take this seriously? Lady didn't even bend at the knees to make that jump. Not even trying. So Hayden nabs Fen as well in mere seconds. Olaf now has an entire super tractor, again within seconds, and all the trolls combine with Hayden, other than Jarvik, for the final 10 minutes. Gonna be famous, gonna be famous, gonna be famous. Oof. I think we've somehow topped one of the worst design shots so far. I mean, floating rows of bushes, and these trolls are so high up off the ground they'd break a bone if real physics decided to kick in. So Hayden only now clicks that the water tower idea will wipe out the newly relocated kids, and Fen returns to the Elder. If he was here right now, I'd take my stick and- <laughs> But they stop him instantly with a sheet of some kind of paper. <laughs> What is this? Running now. You run faster. Oh, no, you don't. Have I just stumbled into a board game roleplay or something? I feel like I've dived into that one mini board game from Mario Party 5. Too niche of a reference? Here's Jarvik slicing at that totem pole as the duplicate kids exist. And Hayden with the others appears to chat. If you pull this prank, you'll be the monster Olaf thinks you are. And then she stops as Olaf... starts to reuse his dialogue lines again. We must really be at the end of the movie. But also, just gotta catch one. Yeah! Is there like a hint of produced animation in there? Since when does Olaf run properly or have an actual swing to his trap? Although he's still straight legged and the knot still does nothing. But look, the camera moved. Brilliant. I think this somehow wins for best shot in the film. Shame Fen is just a giant floating body when he's talking to Olaf. Not to mention, this shot ends with... <laughs> the actual glitchiest shot of the whole film too. But hey, with Asylum, you really gotta run with the punches, you know? And he does a superhero landing on the air, as you do. And actually, I take back all of my praises. I guess it was literally for a third of one shot because everything afterwards is the worst I have ever seen. I can't believe that worked. Uh-oh. <laughs> How, how do you screw it up that badly? How is it so like this? Olaf then goes on to shove his face in another trap for some reason and more feet traps until... Mr. Olaf, for years we've pranked you. We're sorry. And also the Elder comes out around now with... I'm sorry too. I pranked you into that pond, you little boy. Not quite sure the motives behind him for suddenly switching teams, but hey, whatever. I'm 67 minutes into this mess and I cannot wait to get out. And... We're sorry. Well, I'm not. Oh my god. Now they're even rotated incorrectly. Why is my boy standing like he needs to pee? And as they talk some more about the, the issue of the cycle and toxic traditions, yada yada, they all come to a mutual understanding. Fen is put forward as the new leader for some random reason. Dick Van Dyke isn't going anywhere as a troll. He gives another monologue speech about his convictions over the cycle. Also, there's another, another bit about who won the competition. It's Jarvik. No one else cares and neither do I. And eventually, finally, we end off our runtime with... I got a lot to teach you first. If you can handle me, you can handle this. And the shot continues with everyone sliding along the floor at a weird angle, because that's the norm. Oh, and an epilogue too. God, this movie never ends. Hayden has all the Giga Chad personality now. Hey, Frieden. It's Hayden. We know Fre Do you? You know I can outrun either of you. Come on. Hayden isn't fun anymore. Everyone's faces have melted in the new sun physics. Olaf plays with the trolls now. They have a great summer together. What is that? And we end off with Dick Van Dyke narrating us to our post-film explanation. Afterwards, 
She found new purpose helping Ben steer the war. Unfortunately, we can't understand it over the overbearing soundtrack playing over the top of the whole thing. And that was the terrible Trolls ripoff. Oh my god, that was top contender for one of the worst films I have ever seen. It was visual vomit, and I never got used to it. Not to mention the voice acting by everyone was awful. I'm gonna head out, grab some soap for my eyes and ears. I will see you again next time, as for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, bloody hell, and 